Hi, my name is Brittany Swiderski. I'm an orthodontist in New York. I did my dental school in Buffalo and I completed my orthodontic residency at the University of Detroit Mercy. And recently I passed my ABO clinical exam and that's why I'm making this video because I know when I was studying, I was constantly trying to figure out you know, what were the important things to study, what I should focus on. I know Trista did a video that really helped me. And so I told myself that if I passed, it was definitely something that I wanted to do to pay it forward. So this is not affiliated with the ABO. This is just kind of my breakdown on the things that I thought were helpful and how I would organize it if I was telling someone who was in my shoes just a few months ago. So hopefully this is helpful for some of you and it's it's just kind of my take on the exam. So let's get started. So this is my breakdown and the sections that I've organized it into are the exam structure, tips and tricks, and then the what I consider the five categories of this exam. Assessing growth, completing and reading a superimposition, cast radiograph evaluation, miscellaneous literature, and diagnosis and treatment planning. If I think of the different skills that, you know, the ABO, based on the website and, and everything you've heard from, you know, other people who took the exam, this is the areas that I feel are important for the exam, also important as an orthodontist, but I would divide them this way. So let's start off with the exam structure because as we know, this is a different style exam and this was different than any exam that I've ever taken before because it's an oral based clinical exam, which means everything is verbal. It's not like when you take a multiple choice where you can narrow down the answers. It's not like a written exam, exam where you can just write out everything. This depends on solely what you say to the examiner. So that, that's definitely an important thing to understand before you go into this exam. So let's start there. So know the structure of the exam. How did I accomplish this? By going to the ABO website. Do not underestimate how much is actually on that website and it's important to go through everything. So the test description is there. I've included the link and then these are the preparation materials listed by the ABO. Uh, go through all of these, really get, in, get a sense of what this exam was like. So there's example cases, there's the orientation PowerPoint, which goes through the whole process, what will happen when you get there, what the separations of rooms are like, stuff like that. There's the sample cases, there's actually recordings of, I think, sample people taking the exam, and there's also the study guide. The study guide was an essential tool and something I will mention a couple more times through this, but it was really very helpful, at least for me. So the study guide breaks it down into domains, the domains that the ABO wants you to know to show that you're proficient and then be able to pass this exam. And I think there's like 40 questions. Those are 40 questions of what can and will come up on the exam. There's no reason not to know these. They're right there. If you can figure out how to apply them and get comfortable assessing and completing them, then you'll be able to pass this exam. The first skill that you'll need to know is assessing growth. So what does that mean and how how would I recommend figuring out how to do it? It's really based on two articles. So the first article is Fishman's article on hand wrist evaluations and skeletal maturation indicators. This is this article really breaks it down for you. And if you figure out a process that works for you on looking at the hand wrist saying, okay, how far are we along in growth? you'll be able to answer this question. So that's the first article. Second article is the CVM, the cervical vertebral maturation. And this one, don't forget, there has been a couple different versions of this over the years. So definitely, I recommend using the most recent one. I think it went to five stages at one point, it's back to six. Use the most recent one. Go through the article. The the thing I found was helpful was the example images that they have. And then, you know, if, an, if a vertebrae looks like the one that's listed in this article, that's that stage. And you can accept that as the answer. Now, there is a little bit of variability between sometimes it's between CS4 and CS5. And I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel like the board knows that and they'll accept that as an answer if you're somewhere in that range. So 
just get to a point where you're confident in answering this question. And then when the question comes up, because you know it's on the ABO website as something you need to know, you'll be able to answer with confidence and you'll be able to answer it quickly. You won't need to spend a ton of time debating in your head between different numbers. And that time that you saved, you can apply to the biggest section or what I feel like is the biggest section, the diagnosis and treatment planning. So knowing this confidently, knowing it cold will help you in this area, but also help you gain time in the other areas as well. So know those two articles for sure. All right. So now you know how to assess growth. Next, we have completing and reading a superimposition. So how I like to explain or how I think about it is there's two parts to the superimposition. You need to know how to do it, how to superimpose, and then you need to know how to read the superimposition that you've created. If you go through the website, like I recommend, they describe it as two transparencies. So if you remember when you were in grade school and there were those overhead projectors that the teachers would... Um, teach from then there were these clear plastic films so it's two of those and it's your job to overlap them at the appropriate points at the uh, global superimposition and then at the uh, maxillary and the mandibular and then it'll be your job to assess what changes are from dental what changes are from growth again the abo has given you the resources so there's three youtube videos that were very helpful one on the cranial base superimposition one on the maxillary superimposition and one on the mandibular superimposition go through those go through them a lot you know know the points that need to be superimposed upon that that don't change so that you can evaluate the parts that do and then you'll be able to then go on and accurately read it. So how do you know how to read the superimposition? This comes from the article I've listed here, Bu Shang's article. And everybody who will talk to you, everybody who's taking the exam and everybody who's studying the exam, I feel like this is one of those articles that everybody's just saying, you need to know this article. And I absolutely 100% agree with that. It is the article that reading the superimposition is based on. That's what I feel. I wouldn't get too bogged down in all the charts that are in this article, but really focus on what changes you can expect through different intervals of growth. Because how you read a superimposition is knowing how much you're expecting to get from growth so that you can separate that from the changes that happen due to your treatment. So, the cast radiograph evaluation. So I was taught this in residency, I'm hoping Everybody uh, learned this at some point. It is what used to be used when it was a case-based exam. So it's how you evaluate your finished treatment. So how far does it skew from ideal? And that's where you get the points. And the higher the points, the farther away you are from ideal. So cast radiograph evaluation, I was definitely a little bit rusty on this and I didn't have access to models and I didn't really have a school I was affiliated with where I could go practice with. But lucky enough, uh, the ABO does have a calibration kit you can purchase for $210. So it comes with three casts, a measuring gauge, and a scoring key. And really, the, the casts were the most important. It was helpful to have the key, though, as a, as a reference point. Um, but this does come with a grain of salt. So let's go over that. It says that it's the collective agreed-upon scores, but I feel like it has to be an average. I mean, I don't know for sure, but... I remember when we were learning this uh, in residency that I could never get two faculty members um, to get the exact same score. They were close, but it wasn't the exact same. You know, calibration can only get you so far. So I wouldn't stress on getting the exact same. Again, I mean, take this with a grain of salt. This is entirely just my opinion, but just try and get close to what they said. And if there's something that you... You know, I'd be going through and I'd be like, I still don't agree. That's fine. Don't stress over that. Just accept that you're, you know, you and this agreed upon score aren't exactly calibrated, but you should be close enough. As long as you're one or two points away, I feel like you should be within reason. So um, the other thing to know is that if you are buying this kit from somebody else who maybe had it from their case-based exam or from years ago when maybe you were taking the exam... We learned the hard way that the answer key has changed over time. Um, 
So definitely want to use the most up-to-date uh, answer key, which is what you get when you purchase it from the site. I feel like it's helpful to have somebody local, somebody that you can sit down with and say, look, see, this is here. Like, you can only get so much from FaceTime. So, so if you can do these three skills and you can do them quickly, you will have more time for the big bulk of the exam, which I feel like is diagnosis and treatment planning. So let's head in that direction.